So these are the original PSDs of the new banners. They have not been adjusted for color correction. These are the color adjusted versions that I sent to Staples. They've been lightened just a little bit. Um, I was warned that this was going to be way too dark. So I went ahead and lightened it. And since I need a really fast turnaround on these, I printed them using the indoor polypropylene. I have no experience with the indoor polypropylene. Um, I have I don't have any experience printing banners at Staples, I believe. I usually use Build Design, but I don't have the turnaround time for that right now. So what I've decided is I'm going to print on the easiest options that'll get it done as fast as possible. My banners were sized to 6 foot by 18 foot. Um, and that's because if they're 2 foot hanging from the top of my grid, that's too long. That's going to be in my face. So... Um, Staples only does six foot by two foot. So there's white at the top and the bottom and I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna do that at home and I'm gonna set my own grommets. Uh, that saves a little bit of money, but it really saves a lot of time because having them do the grommets was gonna add like five days. So what I basically decided is these are kind of like um, proofs, I guess. Um, they're a little expensive for proofs, but they're proofs. If I don't like how these printed, if I don't like the material, I'm going to send the designs off to build a sign. I'm more familiar with them and I like their price points, but they take a lot longer. So um, I'll have these for ALAC and I'll have, if I don't like these, I'll have new ones for the rest of the year. But I wanted to design banners that promote 7-inch Kara as a book and as a comic, not just the banners that normally, that normally promote me or promote the blog. So these are very much book specific and ALAC is a librarian's conference. So I feel like it was more than time for me to do this. Now, these are huge. Like I said, they're six foot. So they're 72 inches by 18 inches. And it is a really good thing that I scan like everything at 300 DPI because that and this newer version of Photoshop were able to scale it. So hopefully it will look good. If it doesn't, I've got my old banners. It's not the end of the world. So at this point, I don't know what the new banners are going to look like. You guys will know before I will know. So um, they should be done by 8.30 tonight. Probably going to pick them up tomorrow instead. So I, I don't know. It's getting all timey, wimey, and weird. No, go away. But I wanted to show you guys these. In case you're doing your own banners, banners don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be difficult to do. Um, they can be very affordable. You could even get them printed just on paper if you're new. Um, when Heidi and I first started doing conventions together, we would paint our banners. So basically, we just painted our working name, which was Rascals, Rogues, and Dames, onto a length of cloth that Heidi had hemmed. So it can be really, really inexpensive, really, really low tech. But I do think you need a banner, something with your comics name or your working name or your actual name and hopefully some art and maybe somewhere, some like a place like your website where people can find you. This allows people to sort of see your table from across the room. And it really helps because so many conventions have those huge walls of prints. Having a banner is large art that's up high that people can see from a distance. So even if you don't sell prints, it kind of helps you compete visually with those print walls. All right. All right, here we are at Staples here to pick up the two new banners. I can't wait to show you how they look. All right, guys, I've got my two banners. These are printed on polypropylene scrim. It was the cheapest of the not paper options and it had the quickest turnaround, the same day pickup. If I'd gone with vinyl, it would have been five to six days. And then they had a nicer vinyl, like a coated glossy vinyl. And that was delivery only and that was like a week plus. So given that I have kind of tight time constraints, I opted for the scrim. And I printed two versions of my banner and I did check it while I was there to make sure to make sure it would work. I'm only gonna show you guys a little peek right now because it is super nasty wet outside. Don't wanna put these on the ground. This is the darker of the two banners, the one 
Oh, there's some scratch mark. Nope, never mind. It's so high resolution, it caught the cat hairs in the painting. Nice. Um, this is the darker of the two banners. It was the one people expressed concern that it would print too dark, so we're gonna check it out. I think it'll be okay. I did lighten it, like I mentioned to you guys earlier. Don't. And then I've got the lighter one, and both of these are gonna have to be trimmed. So I'll show you the full banners when I'm doing that. And this one features the cover from volume one. I think the blacks on this one probably printed a little bit darker, but it's much higher print quality than the signs I got through Build Design, which were like 120 DPI. These are like, they look higher than 300 to be honest. Like it's really good print quality. You can see the texture of the paper in fact. So um, I'm pretty happy with the turnaround. Instead of setting grommets, what we're going to do is we're going to punch holes in them and then reinforce the holes with packing tape just so they don't tear. And uh, I think we'll be good to go and I'm pretty happy with my banner design. So I need to cut these down to size because they didn't offer a 6 by 18 inch or a 6 foot by 18 inch option. They only offered 6 foot by 2 foot. So I'm going to have to cut these down but otherwise they should be ready to go. Now a warning about this is this is like Yupo. It's polypropylene basically like paper but it's made out of plastic. Um, it's tear resistant but not tear proof. If you get like a tiny nick in there, it's gonna end up tearing. Um, and it will fold and crease. So you do wanna store it kinda rolled up like this. In fact, I'm even concerned that it being rolled up like this might be a problem because it may want to always go back to its curved configuration, which is why I'm gonna punch holes in it rather than mount it using magnets. So I will show you guys when we cut it down. Hey guys, so the weather is beautiful out here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my banners. I'm going to do it one at a time, and since they're huge, I can't really use a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, which would be kind of ideal. So what I'm going to have to do is probably do it out here on the ever beautiful ground. So I need to cut some from at least the bottom and definitely probably the top. Why didn't you just align it at the top? They wouldn't let me. The, that's huh. a thing, that's a good question. So this, usually if I were gonna do this and I had the option, I would align it at the top and then just cut the bottom, but the staples tool wouldn't allow me to do that. And uh, I don't even know if I could have, I guess I could have formatted it. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I was lazy and I'd had about enough of messing around with it anyway. So all I'm going to do is use a pair of scissors to just cut the top from the bottom. Would you do um, kind of like a drive-by to show the quality, the print quality? I'm pretty happy with the print quality on the scrim. I honestly didn't need to adjust the, um, well maybe for the background I did because the background printed nice and it's actually a much darker background. But for Kara herself, I could have left her as is. If you have a steady hand, you can do that uh, wrapping paper trick where you just glide the scissors along, but I've got hand tremors, so I don't trust myself to do that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it and I'll check in with you guys, show off the other banner. So this is the second banner. This one is a little bit brighter and it uses the cover art from volume one. And I found that it was actually very easy to get even really old garbagey scissors like the ones I'm using here to cut this plastic. So I'm just going to use that old wrapping paper trick where you glide the scissors along. Since I'm not sure if the ink on scrim will scrape off, I'm rolling them with the ink on the inside. I'm going to store them in my apartment 
so that they are uh, climate controlled because sometimes with things like toner, if it gets too hot, like the inside of a car, the toner kind of reactivates and gets sticky again and then it would just come off on the opposite side of the roll. Tomorrow, I am going to roll these out again, measure them, figure out where I wanna put my holes and do that. I'll show you how to do that tomorrow. All right guys, so I have my banners here. I have my packing tape here and I have a three hole punch. And the reason I grabbed this is it's one of those powered ones. And since I am punching holes through scrim, I don't know if I have the hand strength to punch through using a traditional hand hole punch. So what I want to do is I'm going to make like four or five holes in each on the top and on the bottom. And I want to make sure really the, for me, the, um, Excuse me. Back up, guys. And I'm going to use a. Hold that. So, really, what is important isn't so much um, how far apart they are, but it matters how deep they all are in the. Um... Anyway. Should have brought a pencil. I did not bring a pencil, so I'm gonna go grab one. I'll be right back. Got my pencil, so what I'm gonna do is it is important, I think, from the sides that I have an even measurement. So this is actually a metric ruler. I think I'm gonna go three centimeters. Make a little mark and do three centimeters from the top and that's where I want my hole. I cut right through the W. Where? On the bottom? Mm -hmm. hmm, you're probably right about that. When I redo this, I'm going to, um, oh, I'm not going to be able to see where my hole is. Why don't you just use a regular hole? Because I don't have one. No. I have a star-shaped one, and I have a, I mean, you could use a knife for this Why don't also. you mark it on the back? Can you see through the bottom? No, I no, can't probably see not. anything. There's a capture. What if you pull off the sleeve on the bottom? Can you see through the bottom no, if you I pull off the sleeve? No, I don't think so. Um, I'll check down you here. Try it. I used to have a regular hole punch. We'll see. All right, oh, he's gonna walk right across the banner. That is Bowie. Um, so I'm gonna find my mark. Oh, it doesn't want a mark in the back. It did, it just didn't want to. Let's see if I can do it with this without ruining my banner. Joseph pointed off out that if we take the back off, we can see right through it. That's weird. Oh, the third one's broken on this. Wow. This is made of pure metal and all the rivets are coming undone. Let's see if I can do it like this. I don't think so because there's a stop in the back. I'm just going to have to use a, a knife. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to test it on this piece of scrap scrim. And I put down a piece of cardboard. Yeah, it'll cut right through it, even though this is a dull knife and you should not cut with a dull knife. So I'm going to cut a small triangular shape. There we go. Obviously, if you have a hole punch, using a hole punch is gonna be a much smarter idea. Then, to prevent it from tearing, we are going to use some packing tape.
I'd be recording you doing this. Yeah, I guess. I don't care. I have no shame. Believe me, no one on YouTube thinks I'm a genius. That tape was bad. And I'm going to put a piece on the front and on the back. You could probably use scotch tape, like a thinner piece of tape for this as well. Just any kind of clear tape. And what we're doing is we're reinforcing that hole so it's not going to tear even more. And then I'm going to cut it again. So there you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread a zip tie through this when I'm hanging it. Um, if I cut a bigger hole, I could do ribbon or you can use twine, anything like that. It doesn't have to be that fancy. And I'm going to do all four corners and then I'm going to do, I think, three along the edge. So I'll check in with you guys after I've done that. Okay, so we are on the last hole on the second banner. I'm really happy to be finished. I kind of honed my procedure, so I'm going to share with you guys what I've learned. So I found my star hole puncher. I really recommend a circular hole punch. If you have a circular hole punch, that's going to make doing this a lot easier and it's going to look a lot better. My holes look kind of ragged and janky, but uh, I'm on a time crunch here and I plan on reprinting these banners on vinyl anyway. So I'm going to adjust the text. In fact, something else I want to talk to you guys about. Depending on where you want to set your holes and depending on whether or not you're putting grommets in, you definitely want your text to be about two inches from any of the borders or um, any of the banner edges. Many sites will have like a printing bleed. If you're setting your own grommets, you want to accommodate even further for that. So several of my letters for these do indeed have holes in them and the holes are kind of, kind of really rough looking, but that's okay. These are kind of like draft banners anyway. I'm going to make some changes and then I'm going to have them reprinted so I'm not that concerned about it. You are also going to want to have a pair of scissors and we found that it looks a lot better if you put the packing tape on only one side. So I'm going to go ahead and set the last hole which is really going to be a problem because a watercolor comic comes way too close to the edge. I'm doing it about three centimeters in. I probably could have done it two centimeters in though. Much easier with a hole punch than using a knife. It's also helpful to have a nice sharp X-Acto blade so you can cut the tape when you're finished. So my star holes are too small so I'm just using the scissors to kind of make them a little bit bigger. And you want to tear off a fairly thin piece of packing tape instead of the big ones I was cutting. Something just big enough to kind of go around the hole and prevent it from tearing. And the scrim will tear if you don't reinforce it. And then I'm going to use the X-Acto blade just to cut that hole again. You probably... If you have a nice hole punch, you probably can do all your layers at one time. I do not have a nice hole punch, so that is not something I'm going to risk. Alright, so that is done. I'm just going to roll it up. I've already got the other one rolled up for storage. So, um... I acknowledge that this is not the most professional looking banner. You can, I've had more professional looking banners for sure, and you can easily get more professional banners than these, but considering the turnaround and the cost, I'm very satisfied with what I was able to do. There were no other options that would have been finished in time for me to leave for ALAAC. So considering I had that kind of time crunch and the scrim, 
and cutting my own holes allowed me to have new banners for the show that will hopefully look great when up. Like hopefully you're not going to notice the holes when they're up on my grids. Um, I'm very satisfied with that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. And I highly encourage you guys have a banner for your convention table. It can be your comic, it can be your brand name, it can be your given name, just something that will attract customers from across the room. I'm Becca Hilburn. If you're looking for more convention uh, tips and tutorials, head on over to howtobeaconartist.tumblr.com for more. Bye guys. So this is the banner, the one printed on Scrim. As you guys can see, there are some issues with it, mostly my own design issues. So I'm gonna keep that in mind when I am working on the newer version of it and uh, get it printed on vinyl. But I wanted to follow up with you guys on how it turned out. It's actually fairly easy to hang on the grid wall. Um, in the future, I would prefer if I were to print on Scrim again, the printing on Scrim is really nice, but if I were to print on Scrim again, I would use a hole puncher rather than the star punch and then cutting it out. Unfortunately, we didn't have a hole puncher, but it'd be worth the investment just to make it easier. And I would definitely leave room in the lettering for the holes. And this was cut down to 18 inches, which is just slightly larger than one set of grids. So another thing I might do is do a six foot by 12 inch or six foot by one foot banner as well. So thank you guys so much for watching my uh, banner emergency. I hope it was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. And I hope it maybe inspired you to try making your own banner on the cheap. This is Becca Hilburn. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye. So all in all, I'm really glad that I went with the Staples Scrim Banners. They were a little bit expensive. I do think using a real hole punch instead of a staple hole, I mean a star-shaped hole punch and then cutting it larger um, would give a nice cleaner look. But most of my problems I had with my banners were due to my own graphic design flaws rather than the flaws in the banner themselves. If you are looking for a quick, fairly affordable, fast turnaround and high quality production for your vet, for your banner, a scrim poly or polypropylene banner is not the worst choice you could make, and it could be a great step in between getting a vinyl banner. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you guys. I highly recommend you get banners and signage or create banners and signage for your convention tables. It draws a crowd over, it lets people know where you are, and it can attract attention from a distance. They don't have to be expensive. They can be very much DIY, very homemade, but this is just one example of the many options you guys have available to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. For more convention craft tips, tricks, and tutorials, Stick around, I have more videos on this channel, and head on over to howtobeaconartist.tumblr.com. I'm one of your friendly neighborhood admins, Natto Soup, also known as Becca Hilburn, and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys!